Joining me today is the Māori Party's Chief Whip. To Uruo Flavo. It's his job to keep the party in line. He's also about to push through a gambling bill designed to protect Māori from the evils of pokies. Kia ora to Uruo. Kia ora, Joe. The gambling harm reduction bill is known as the People Before Pokies bill. Why are you even attempting to tackle this? Well, it's always been uh, one of the bills that's been on our agenda uh, as a private member's bill. It comes in under my name, but certainly uh, been promoted by the party. Uh, it comes about on the back of a lot of evidence that tells us that uh, there is a huge damage that's been done uh, by gambling across the board, but in particular by the effects of, of pokey machines uh, on our women in particular. Um, and we decided to take it apart and put it in front of Parliament such that we can open this whole debate up with respect to uh, gambling and the effect that it has on, on our people. I don't think we ever thought we were going to get rid of gambling, which we aren't, but we want to certainly reduce the harm that it causes. What was it that specifically led to it becoming something that the Māori Party wants to push? Well, it's across the board that you've seen, I think, in, in latest reports, issues around gambling, around alcohol, uh, those sorts of things, uh, and tobacco, of course, uh, which is uh, probably one of the, the latest issues, uh, are, are things that affect our people in a serious way. Uh, we think that it's about time, and a lot of it's simply because of the evidence. Uh, the evidence says that 50% um, of the proceeds that comes uh, from, from gambling um, uh, is, comes from problem gamblers. And of that 50%, half of them are Māori, uh, probably women. Uh, we know that 30% of all the money that comes from gambling goes to the racing industry. So there's a lot of rorts there that have, uh, haven't been really put out in the open uh, for the public to hear. But the, the real key issue for us is around the issue of water about the wealth, uh, the health rather, uh, of our people. Uh, and in particular, the damage that, it, that gambling does through pokies across the board, not only to those people who, who move into that sort of uh, that, um, activity, so but more, more the children and the families as well. What you're doing is being considered as social hazard policy. Is it social engineering what you're doing? Well, if it, if it produces... Uh, better outcomes for our people, then that's where we want to be, whether that be in alcohol, tobacco um, or gambling. Uh, we want to be um, there uh, to address issues that affect our people across the board. What do you say to people, though, who say that pokey money is about funding communities anyway? So you take that money away, how do they cope? Well, they'll cope because we've done how? it in the past. Well, simply because the fact is, is that we've, we're in, in the bill, it suggests that the money that's made within communities should stay within those communities. At the moment, money can be made in South Auckland and sent to Dunedin. We say that that's wrong. Second thing is, is that the issues around gambling in, in particular in those local communities should be uh, discussed and debated within that community itself. So it should be for the community to make decisions around the issues of pokies and the number of pokies in that particular community. So if they're making decisions about the money that comes from those communities, then that community will benefit from the money that comes out of pokies. Albeit, uh, we're saying on one hand we want to reduce the harm on the other side of the coin, we acknowledge that there are some benefits that comes from money that comes out of pokey machines. What are the practicalities? How would you actually remove them? Oh, just by a sinking lid policy, that is, to say that there cannot be within communities any more increase in the number of pokey machines, uh, and that by securing um, positions on a community board, or rather establishing a community board, they will make the decisions about the numbers that are appropriate for their community, and that will be because those people that make up that board come from that community. So is this a new social policy drive for the Māori Party, given that you want a smoke-free Aotearoa by 2025? I think across the board it's certainly where we want to be. We want to uh, making decisions that are uh, that we get from feedback from our own people, by the way. Uh, we certainly want to be looking towards making some changes for our people in the best interests of our people. Speaking of feedback from the people, what are they telling you about the Māori Party's position on uh, Takutai Moana Bill? Uh, across the board we've had a number of, uh, well, you've, you've already reported, I think, on our AGM. Uh, so there were some that said uh, that they didn't necessarily like it. There are others who uh, endorsed the position being ta taken by the party and similarly uh, with the correspondence that we've had across the board. There are some who have said that uh, they think we could have done better. There's others who have said, well, keep going because it's the best deal that we've got on the, on the table at the moment. Keep going. And um, from, a, from the party perspective, our role will be now to go through the select committee process, uh, also have meetings with the key people that we need to uh, to give us some guidance. And when it comes to the second reading and the, the rest of the process, we'll be reassessing in, uh, our position as we go based on, on feedback across the board. Do you think you've failed your people, Not given that's why you're in Parliament? Not at all. Not at all. Well, what do you say to the people 
In your electorate who are really unhappy with the fact that the Māori Party is approving of this? To be truthful, um, from all of, the invest all, all of the feedback that I've had, I haven't had one that says we've got it wrong. Uh, I've had some that have said, uh, not a lot of correspondence by the way, uh, but certainly those ones who said, well, we understand the position that you're in. I mean, we came in on the, on the banner of, one, uh, um, uh, repealing the Act, number one. Number two, having a restoring access of our people back to go to court to, to uh, secure title and the customary title. We've achieved both of those things. Three, uh, that there should be uh, no sales of the land, uh, of the foreshore and seabed, and number four, public access. All of those have been achieved. The one that we missed out on, and I'm happy to say that, well, not happy to say it, but this is one practical reality that we took on the road, and it was a position that was promoted certainly through our discussions with the government, which was about Māori title. We didn't achieve Māori title, but we did achieve customary title. Okay. Horny opposed it. Sure. Did you ever consider opposing it too? No. Why not? Well, because uh, I had my hand on it just as much as anyone else. All of our party, uh, our ministers, and all of us as a team, has have had an opportunity throughout the last six months uh, to work with the ministers and officials uh, all the way through. We've had briefing papers, we've had the opportunities to meet with the ministers and so and it's with some disappointment that Horne changed and in the end he changed on the last on the last night before we were actually going to make a decision. Uh, but again, all of us, all of us had our hand on that on that uh, bill. It was ours. We owned it right through to the very end. Now it's available for the public. Okay. That's where we right. and it's our bill. Okay, kia ora. Thank you very much to Uruor. All the best. Thank you for coming on the program too. Kia ora. Kia ora, Scotty. Tēnā koe, Jerry. Tēnā koe, Tokurana Tira Tūruroa. Tēnā koe, Juan.